getting ready. Handshakes will be. And there we are. We are about to start. Big question. Will Magnus take Miller setups as the one that we saw with Wesley? And I think we very well could happen on the board. We've seen him employ the hippo where he develops the pawn on the sixth rank, takes out pieces in a KG way just to avoid any trades. David, you know Magnus best. What is going on in his mind about his opening approach right now? He's just wondering how to throw Fabiano off, how to get out of the books, and uh, how to ensure he avoids preparation. It was funny, as you were talking there, Tanya, I was thinking, what would I do? I would probably play B6, and then Magnus played it. He beat me to the punch, but uh, this move... It's uh, very provocative again, doesn't fight directly for the centre, but it does allow Black's white squared bishop to fear in Kezo. So um, it depends on how Fabiano approaches this. Does he try to punish Black for giving away the centre, giving away a bunch of central squares? Or does he just try to transpose into better known waters? He plays f3, one of the most ambitious moves here, Robert, trying to build the biggest pawn centre possible. White. I think it's a good decision from Fabiano because it does make your uh, diagonals a little bit loose. Your dark squares can be taken advantage of later, but you're playing in a principal manner. If your opponent is playing on the flank, you play in the center. So the F3 move to play E4 next. I am interested to know why Fabiano is thinking at this stage. I think he can even take the knight to try to bring a black piece in the center and then strike with E4 to gain a tempo. Uh, so far, so good for Fabi, but I like the choice from Magnus nonetheless. You have to play something that's offbeat that does not allow a forced draw, and while white is better, at least black will have some long-term chances. Yeah, both sides get what they want. Fabiano will maybe obtain a small space advantage with white, very healthy position. Magnus gets a non-orthodox pawn structure and uh, active pieces of his own as he pauses. He's about to recapture the piece. And he's just deciding how to recapture that piece. But I think either way that he takes it, it's the queen that's coming out. Yes, I was about to say that the e-pawn will move forward, gaining space over the center, also opening up the path for the bishop to come into an active square, perhaps c4. Yeah, I like White's position, I've got to say, Robert. Yeah, I'm just imagining Magnus reflecting on Wesley's position. Like, why couldn't I get something like that? And the reason why is that Fabiano started one d4. We didn't really talk about his first move, but he's historically loved playing e4, the king's pawn push on move one. He chose d4 to play a more solid setup. And for Magnus, looking at this position, where is he going to counter? What pawns is, are he going to throw forward? And it looks like White just has the upper hand because of the dominance in the center. I like white center, white knight will happily develop to the square in front of the king and it just looks like harmony in white's pieces. Meanwhile, black still has to figure out the piece setup that you want. The ideal square for that knight would be, for the black knight would be c6, but that comes in the way of Magnus' bishop right now. What do you think about this surprise that you mentioned earlier, that Fabi starts with 1d4? This ambitious approach of going with the F3 opening, we're just seeing Fabi not back down against Magnus. He's declining repetitions in positions, in complicated positions. He's going all out. It's like a Fabi 2.0. Yeah, I was actually planning to save this for later to kind of see how the uh, kind of match results panned out first.
and there's nothing that white can do because if the knight moves or the rook moves you lose that b3 pawn and you cannot give black a two on none on that side of the board but if the king goes forward some more maybe the white rook will start gaining access to key squares to go after the black king side so you don't want to go all in but magnus he's down under 40 seconds himself everything under control thus far but if he drops another 20 seconds perhaps fabi will have a chance Fabi gets rid of another set of pawns. Suddenly some counterplay potentially, getting his rook active. The black bishop drops back though. What a nice move there from Magnus to keep control to remind white of the weakness of the white B pawn, the isolated pawn on the queen side. It's tying down white's pieces and now the board is even more open and uh, really placed the bishop's skills here, the bishop's abilities compared to the knight, dominating this white knight. Really nice there, but pawns have been traded off, and we see the eval bar, but is it as easy as the eval bar seems to imply? Well, white just has these two moves that you're seeing, the rook going back and forth, and now can be freed because the b3 pawn is defended. So Magnus, he's bringing his king forward. Every single piece for him is doing his job. It kind of reminds me of the end game with Ali Reza Ferruja, where he had rook and bishop, Ali Reza had rook and knight, and now he's just targeting that weakness of Fabi's. He has to passively defend. Now he clamps down on the king side as well, taking away more moves, more freedom from uh, Fabiano Caruana, the knight and the rook all tied down to defend b3. Zuxu and Tanya, white just can't move, white can't move the rook or the knight because the b pawn would drop. If white moves the king, black might even play a move like h4, pawn to h4. Here we go, we see it, and white's king side falls apart now. Full board awareness, black's bishop controls both flanks. The rook is so dexterous right now, attacking the white knight. And rook to d3, coming in, king coming in, white's remaining pawn will drop and Magnus will win. Which is unbelievable how easy he made this look. He just completely took away all squares from Fabi's pieces and then all of his pieces marching forward, taking away the moves, wins that extra pawn. Is he just going to capture on b3 next? I don't see why not. It looks like a free pawn and then he can rumble forward with his other pawns and he takes it. Fabi is going to try to get active with his rook, but even if he gains one pawn, there's still the other to deal with. Charlie, the C-pawn marching down the board now. This C-pawn will cost White his knight long term. It's coming towards promotion. An attack on the rook first of all. Magnus slides away and Fabiano, oh. they keep playing. No fight left here, no resources left and he resigns. He doesn't and how many times have we seen this? Magnus got with his back against the wall, rises to the occasion. He delivers and takes it to Armageddon. And I think I saw a slight smile from Magnus. He's not going to be happy with his play overall, but that was a great game from the world number one. He outplayed Fabi from this offbeat opening, and Fabi, he's going to be kicking himself because he had this match seemingly in the bag, but when you're playing Magnus Carlsen, never say never. And it does go down to the wire as the players are about to give their hair. Uh, Magnus Carlsen struggling there a little bit with the pan. He hasn't struggled in game four.